Salutations, everyone. Welcome to What Mattered Comic Con Edition. Obviously, I'm not coming to you from Comic Con because if I did that, it'd be too loud. You wouldn't be able to hear anything. The hub of all comics, TV shows, movies, video games, and anime, and that's kind of what this show is all about. So, without further ado, this is What Mattered. <laughs> some hands-on stuff I can tell you guys about at SDCC on the main floor. First of all, we have the Han Solo Solo movie that will be coming out slated for 2019. It's got Phil Lord and uh, the guys from 21 Jump Street and the Lego movie. He's going to be writing and directing the film. Those guys have a lot of huge titles on their plate. So we'll see what goes there. It's going to be a prequel, so this is going to be Han Solo before A New Hope. So obviously they're going to have to cast a much younger Han Solo. There hasn't been a lot of names thrown out so far, but since it's so far away, I think it's not too easy to think about how often people will be speculating on this casting announcement because, you know, he's kind of a popular character, hence the Solo film. In comic book news, Civil War number one for the uh, Secret Wars has uh, come out this week. I read it and it is fantastic. It has a lot of crazy implications. Uh, this is Civil War if it didn't end. So it's been going on, you know, for an additional six years, which is absolutely crazy. It has a lot of really crazy, really cool stuff in it. So I would definitely recommend. Uh, the read, I think it's a good companion to what we have seen from Civil War so far, and has a lot of really interesting implications about how the story has progressed and what has gone on with all this past time. Speaking of storylines picking up after a lot of lost time, Invader Zim issue number one is out after the show being cancelled many, many eons ago. It's coming back as a comic, I did announce that uh, a couple of months ago. Um, but the, only the first issue is out, the next one comes out on the 19th of August, and I can tell you guys, it is very good. It's true to this, the show, of course. You still have uh, Jonathan Vasquez as the, the creator, the writer. It has the same feel, the same art style, the same comedic value to it, and it is, it's, it's everything that you would expect from an Invader Zim comic book. So I did get some hands-on experience with a lot of games on the show floor, including uh, Godzilla, a new Yu-Gi-Oh game that's going to be coming out on current generation consoles, Mighty Number no. 9, as well as the Mega Man uh, Legacy Collection. The Mega Man Legacy Collection is about what you would expect. It, it's got really good resolution, fantastic frame rates, but, you know, no new surprises. Now, as far as new Mega Man games, Mighty Number no. 9, I got my hands on that, and that is not going to disappoint fans that were hoping for Keiji Inafune to bring back Mega Man and better than ever. The graphics are awesome, Beck looks good, it's got voice acting which would be a first in a Mega Man game if this was a Mega Man game. It's got some interesting mechanics in that Beck shoots uh, you know, his lemons, and yes they do still look like lemons, and then you use your dash attack in order to absorb the data of your enemies that have, of course, as always, gone haywire and rogue, or maverick as they were called, in the X series. Now, it does feel a lot more like the traditional Mega Man games in the movements and the platforming and the shooting capabilities. There's no ability to climb on walls or use charge shots like you would in Mega Man X. Um, I'm not too sure if those will be unlockable later, but it doesn't seem like they will be. But still, the movement is very fluid. My gameplay was intuitive, I was able to learn things that before the game taught me how to do them, and I was able to beat the first boss without getting hit on only my second try, so it's, it's, it's a very intuitive game as you would expect from KG and Afne. he's been doing this for years, and so Mighty Number no. 9, definitely not going to disappoint. What will disappoint is the new Godzilla game. In case you were looking forward to that after the awesome movie that came out last year, well, this seems like a quick cash grab, and it is nothing like the Godzilla games that we got two generations ago on the GameCube, Xbox, and PlayStation 2, with just Godzilla Destroy All Monsters Melee, and I forget what the second one was. But this one, the graphics, of course, are better. Not on par with other current generation console games that look a lot more like what you would expect from last gen. Um, it was just the demo where you do some destruction in Tokyo and then you fight a Mecha King Ghidorah and Space Godzilla. 
it's a very small area, which I'm sure it's going to be bigger, but it was incredibly small compared to the large areas we had in Destroy All Monsters Melee. The, the fighting wasn't that smooth. Um, the camera was terrible, so definitely not looking forward to this Godzilla game because it's just not what we have experienced in the past and definitely not an improvement on the mechanics that we have been used to and would expect from this kind of franchise. I did go to the Halo 5 Guardians panel today, which had a lot of information on the story, and holy lore, Batman, this is going to be a huge game when it comes to just the the scope, the epicness, this, it's a huge game, bigger than 4 or 3 or 2 or Wars or ODST or whatever you're used to. This connects to absolutely everything that we've seen from the Halo universe so far. Uh, like I mentioned, Blue Team is coming to the game for the first time, so it connects to uh, The Fall of Reach, which is getting a three-part animated uh, adaption, which will be coming out uh, later this year, before the game comes out, in three separate parts. It's going to be following what we've learned from First Strike, when we were really introduced to Master Chief being with Blue Team. Um, we have a lot more information on uh, the Fire Team Osiris, um, that uh, Locke will be heading up, along with Korth Buck from ODST, who looks a lot more like Nathan Fillion this time around, obviously, with the new engine and new graphic capabilities of the Xbox One, as well as the other two uh, Spartan 4s that will be on Fireteam Osiris, which have a lot of backstory. So this ties into the books, it ties into the graphic novels, uh, it ties into the current uh, comic book going on right now that they're doing through Dark Horse. It goes into the three-part Fall of Reach adaptation that they're doing later this year. It goes into the podcast uh, that we've been seeing and teasing through. And there will be a second season of the podcast to unlock the truth of you know Locke and Master Chief and why they are at odds, what Master Chief has been up to. It goes into the grayer areas of the Halo lore when it comes to the Spartan 2 program, what Halsey has done, and as well as things that Master Chief may or may not have done that kind of falls in a more of a murky area than we might have realized so far. They also touched a little bit on the Warzone um, multiplayer so there is no firefight there is no more spartan ops but this war zone is bigger in scope a lot more to do and a lot more replayability it was something that uh frank o'connor stressed a lot was the replayability of war zone the replayability of the uh, campaign with the co-op being um more different in that it's it's created as a co-op game these characters aren't just thrown in there to be mindless husks they're part of the story and uh, that you can jump in and out of co-op, which is very nice, um, through any of uh, Fireteam Osiris or Blue Team. So that is very cool. Just a lot to look forward uh, for Halo 5 Guardians all the way up to its release and further onward past that. Any Hootie and the Bluefish, that is what mattered this week. If you'd like to know what matters in the future, you can hit the subscribe button when it comes out every single Saturday. Sorry about the low quality of uh, today's video with the gorilla style footage that I showed you guys. Uh, but I did what I could, and I hope to see you guys in the future. Much more from SDCC to come, uh, as well as uh, stuff that I will learn for you guys on Saturday and Sunday, as well as just a complete separate video on my experience, as well as a haul video. So stay tuned to that if that interests you, and I'll see you guys next time.